recording now. Fantastic. Uh, well, hi everybody. Welcome to our FinFam Town Hall. Um, that's quite a mouthful. I don't think I said those words all together um, in the same sentence yet. So we definitely had a very challenging uh, week and it sounds like we're in for a couple more challenging uh, weeks or maybe months, but uh, I wanted to me and the board wanted to get the community together and have a conversation about uh, where we're headed, how we can create virtual community, um, and then also answer some of the questions that you have, because we have a lot of the same questions and some of them we can answer, some of them uh, we don't yet have answers to, but we can make sure that we're collecting the information and reporting back to you to the best of our ability. So. Um, as always, though, you know, our Finn fam, uh, we're young, scrappy, and we're committed. Uh, and so I know we're always ready to change the world, and I'm looking forward. There's no group that I would rather go through all of these challenging things with um, than you all. So I'm at least glad that I'm in Indiana, uh, and we are problem solving together. So since a lot of times I think our community is either 15 minutes early um, or five minutes late because they're overly optimistic, I figured we could just go into our golden circle, why, how, uh, and what um, for these first few minutes and then go pretty much right into the Q&A questions that we had pre-gathered for the event. Um, so in terms of, you know, the why we do what we do, First Indiana Robotics, we believe that our future is built better together and that improving the world starts with our youth. Those are our students. Uh, and the way we build our future is through mentorship, partnered with hands-on learning, problem solving, connected to community engagement, and core values applied in times of intense competition. It's about more than robots, which I think is what we'll be definitely talking about today, but we are a robotics community that prepares young people for life. And so those pieces about how we're about more than robots and we're about working with the students and standing the students up and really guiding and mentoring them um, is one of the reasons we wanted to come together today and give some, the students some community that they can work through. So uh, we're going to go jump in uh, to Q&A. And so Chris Osborne did mention uh, where can you submit new questions. And so we had shared on social media and sent out some information about um, the Google form that you could submit it to. Um, we are uh, watching that form. So if you have, you know, want to submit that information, um, those are definitely some options. Also, uh, we have the chat link. And so the idea is that if you are submitting something that is a new question and a new topic that we haven't gone over, you would submit that via our Google form. If you are submitting something um, that is essentially associated with something we're already talking about, um, we'll essentially answer those questions and go from there. So, uh, Chris, and you should have access to the Google form because you have a First Indiana Robotics um, email address, just as an FYI. So that's exciting. <laughs> All right, so first question. Um, this was the first submitted question and I really uh, did appreciate it. Um, so basically, you know, we got the question, how are you guys holding up? And Mary uh, Reinhardt was, will be joining me. She is the vice chair of the uh, First Indiana Robotics Board of Directors. Um, and so I'm not gonna lie, it was really hard. Um, you know, everything was moving along very quickly early in the week uh, when we got the news that St. Joseph um, was going to be postponed. You know, we pretty much took action right away, um, had to connect with headquarters and make that announcement and get that information out to teams. Um, I maybe did spend Thursday morning when I normally would have like packed up for the event crying on, in, in my closet on the floor, but that's okay, you know, because emotions are mean, mean you're human. Um, but I think the important part was that we really rallied um, and we started problem solving. And uh, although all of the season had been suspended, um, you know, we were doing things like trying to figure out, okay, if we don't have a St. Joseph event, how can we move teams to Columbus? Um, what are our options? Uh, and so that, that problem solving spirit was definitely still there. 
Uh, Mary, I don't know if there's anything that you want to add. Um, yeah, so the Board of Directors uh, met last night to really review the crisis timeline that happened um, and really the order that ha things happened. I think looking back on last week, things happened so fast. And um, as an organization, we've really learned a lot from what's happened before. So the different snow events that we've encountered, we've been able to learn from those and how to respond to those. Um, and so my hope is that our communication was clear um, and that we communicated in a timely manner. Um, if you have any feedback for us as a, as a board, um, we'd be happy to take that feedback as well. You can email that directly to me. Um, and, um, you know, where we want to improve communication moving forward. Um, but it, it ended up being that we, you know, headquarters made it really, made a clear and concise decision when they um, postponed um, and, or suspended the season. Um, and so, um, and that's really what we're going to talk about as we move forward. Um, and so, um, you know, one of the things that we did early on that I think really helped was to identify a point person um, because I was the one. <laughs> who took the initial interest in putting out the first press release that ended up being me. Um, but I think that was a, a critical step for us as an organization. And so I hope that was helpful. Um, again, if you think there are things we, we could do better, we'd love to improve our process as well. Um, you know, my heart really aches for the students um, that, you know, that didn't get to their chance to shine in the limelight. Um, this year, and we hope that we can, um, you know, continue to provide opportunities for them to do what they do best, um, maybe in other ways this year. Um, and so I'll pass it back to Renee. Awesome. So we're going to jump right into, so that was the first submit question. So just thank you so much um, for asking how we were doing. Uh, that was, you know, really kind of lovely to see. So one of the questions that came in is, is the 2020 FRC season canceled or delayed? And so Mary, uh, you were going to answer this question. Yes, so um, currently the season is suspended. Um, and that is language that we are currently using from um, first headquarters. Um, and we are using that term very purposefully. Um, so suspended really means that it's not, um, it's not canceled <laughs> or delayed. Um, it's really just put on pause until we can really evaluate further um, this situation is so unprecedented, um, you know, with most Americans being um, quarantined in their home for the next 15 days um, and students in Indiana being um, not going back to school until at least May 1st. Um, we really have no idea um, what things will look like um, in the in in, in the coming months. And so I think First Headquarters has, has that impression as well. And so they are suspending the, the season for further evaluation. Uh, we are taking our direction as an affiliate partner from them. Um, and we'll, we cannot hold any events without their um, guidance. And so we are really waiting to hear back from them um, to, for, you know, for, for any direction. Um, the championship is definitely canceled. Um, they, they provided direct guidance on that, that they are not holding the championship or either championships. Um, but in terms of our Indiana first events, those have been suspended. All right. And uh, then the next question, um, there were a number of questions around awards. Uh, and so will Dean's List still be done this year? And so I was going to kind of take this question and explain where we're at with this. And so currently we know that First Headquarters is working on a plan moving forward and uh, we will be sure to update everybody, but we'll be essentially working with direction from them. Um, and so the good news is that for the first tech challenge program, the de Dean's List finalists prior to the state tournament were identified and able to be confirmed. Um, and so those will be announced, um, I believe at some point this week. And so those will be our Dean's List uh, you know, finalists. There will be three of them for the first tech challenge program. Oh They'll be invited to our student board of directors. And then our uh, Dean's List finalists nominees for the FRC program from Bloomington have already been invited to join the student board of directors. So congratulations, um, Bella from 5010 and Sam from 3176. Uh, and then, uh, of course, once we get the direction from headquarters, we will 
uh, be bringing, ideally bringing in um, additional students to student board of directors. So hopefully they'll be able to figure that out because there are virtual opportunities that have been put into place for people to review those pieces, but we will wait for direction from headquarters on that. So then some of the other questions included, what is the status of the chairman's submissions? Um, and again, because we're in this state of suspension, um, we don't really have an update for the, the chairman's submissions, but we will be providing updates and answers to these questions um, on our website as a place that you can go locally to compile that information. But then, um, I also know that people had questions about Woody Flowers as well. And so, I know it's really challenging that we can't necessarily celebrate all of these different applications uh, together uh, in person for the time being, but I know that First Headquarters is working on a plan and they'll update everybody, you know, once they kind of can have those confirmations. Uh, we're happy to take your questions that you have. Um, and if we don't know the answers, we can either funnel them to headquarters to get them uh, responded to, or we can answer them um, to the best of our ability as we know more about what's going on. Um, but this is really a time to make sure that you know we are here and we are paying attention, we're listening, and we wanna make sure that you know, we are able to celebrate the season somehow, one way or another. So, uh, what, so and Mary, I think this was one of your, you know, next questions um, was related to our district events in the state championship. Yes, so, um, so really the question of will, will First in Indiana Robotics like to have district events in a state championship um, is really, suspended. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, not to give the same answer and over and over again, but really until we know more about the circumstances surrounding COVID-19, um, we're really, we're, we're trying to figure out what's going on with it. Um, so we're putting a hold on any first related official competitions. However, we're really looking um, at different ways as an Indiana group to celebrate our competition season. Um, and so, and Renee's going to talk a little bit about our virtual um, community and the ways that we're planning on doing that and the ways that you can get your team involved in that. Um, and so first is planning on, on updating the community on, on the plans for different districts and state championships in the coming week, but we don't have any official plans as of yet. Okay. And then... Chris is telling me that my screen is partially cut off, so that's super exciting. So I am pausing for a second. Oh, Danny's, that's great. Uh, I am resharing um, my specific document. Here we go. Um, I, I can jump in with the next part of that question. Um, yeah. So um, with when would that, those events really take place was the next question. Yep. Um, and so, <laughs> The timeline of this is also a really challenging piece because um, we don't really know when things are going to clear up. Um, and um, for other organizations I'm a part of, um, the, the first time that we're really starting to put things back on a calendar is August. Um, and so it's really hard to know when things are going to take place. Um, as an organization, we are not putting any dates on any calendars right now um, because we. Um, we really want to um, make sure that the situation is cleared up um, before we move forward with anything, and we will let you know when that's happening. We've had a couple of mentors reach out about potentially hosting different competitions. Um, we are interested in continuing to host um, the, the events that we um, had planned. If we can continue to host those events, we would like to, and our, our venue partners would like to to host those events um, in the same capacity. And so if we can, can continue to host those events, we would really like to do that. Um, and uh, to, to really pay, to honor our sponsors and to honor the way that the season really could have been. Um, and so um, the next question was how, what does an off season event look like? Um, yeah. And, so, um, do you wanna go, do you wanna take that one Renee? Yeah. Yep. No problem. Um, we're back to sharing. So 
Um, in terms of, you know, we got a lot of questions about people asking if they could partner with us to host an off season event. Um, and so first I just really loved that problem solving attitude that Indiana always has. Um, but, uh, you know, right now with school being, um, you know, put on hold until May 1st, which was a new update as of today from our governor. Um, you know, we, we need to kind of wait a couple weeks to determine what some of these answers are. Um, I know that the communities that we talked to about um, the fact that these events were essentially, you know, the, that our season was suspended or the events that were postponed, they were very interested in us coming into their communities and engaging with us and supporting us. Um, and so I think it's important to note that you know, we really appreciated all of that support that we were receiving from the, the district events um, that weren't, we weren't able to execute in the March and April timeframes. Um, and so as we figure out some of these different plans, we'll want to make sure we talk to those contacts about um, what potential opportunities might look like. However, I do have to say, uh, we are always looking to vet potential venues for future um, first events so that uh, we could potentially expand or put venues in different locations and things like that. Um, and so we will uh, absolutely share details about the RFP process that we typically go through um, as it relates to vetting potential venues. So that way you all know uh, what that looks like. And so I would say if you could give us maybe um, until you know, April to make sure that we have all of our ducks in a row, that would be greatly appreciated. But that's also some one of the standard times that we normally submit um, our 2021 RFP information too. So yeah, we, we could just do a little adjusting and go from there. Mary? I wanted to add to that. You know, one of the reasons that for this season, um, we had to go back to back to back to back to back, <laughs> or we were planning on going back to back to back to back to back, was because of the availability of the venues. Um, and so one of the ways that um, if you have a venue that, or a school that's available that you think would be a good host site, um, and they have an, a, a large availability, especially, um, but have any availability, I think that it's important to submit um, an RFP, um, or a bid rather, um, because it gives us as choices as an organization and allows um, potentially us to put the, the competitions at different weeks so that students aren't going back to back to back to back. Um, for the competitions. And I think that would greatly ease um, the burden that's placed on those students, uh, mentors, and volunteers. That's something we look at very closely as an organization when we're planning. I mean, you feel that when you are going to competitions weekend after weekend. And so that's something that um, host sites can directly participate in. So if you are interested in hosting a competition as a team, um, I would highly encourage you to submit a bid. Fantastic. Chris, if we could go to the next slide, that'd be great. Um, so one of the other interesting questions that we got was how many FRC and FTC teams could the state sustain? Uh, and so Chris, I figured since you had all of this data uh, put together in a beautiful spreadsheet that you could answer some of these questions. So if you go to the next slide, we have some of that information, but if you wanna unmute and kind of share about that or go back one slide and then do that because you're currently muted. Yeah, sorry about that. And now I need to share my screen again. <laughs> yeah, Indiana's in an interesting place. Um, we have, uh, in the public high school realm, we have 402 public high schools. Just about half of those have fewer than 500 students. We're a very rural school district uh, statewide. Um, so kind of if we look at um, the threshold now, keep in mind too though, we do have, um, we do have uh, roughly five of our FRC teams that compete uh, in F five FRC teams that are less than 500 students. Um, so five of the 57. Um, so I don't ever want to say that a school that size can't do it. Um, they, we certainly have the schools out there that are doing it and doing it well. Um, but I would say probably if we look statewide, um, of the top 33 largest high schools, um, we're in 17 of them. So there's still 16 of the largest high schools. And that's, there's 33 high schools in the state with more than 2,000 students. Uh, so again, though, that's not a lot when we look at other states. Um, 
And uh, so we look at the 16 that we're not in. Um, and then the next from like 1,000 to 2,000, we look at those numbers. I would say we probably could sustain 125 FRC teams eventually and definitely over 200 FTC teams. Uh, I mean, honestly, I mean, if we look at the fact that we have 202, uh, well, right about 200 high schools with less than 500, um, if all of them had an FTC program, which would be very uh, doable, uh, there's 200 right there on top of the fact that we, are, we also have uh, plenty of schools that um, here in Indiana that now have multiple FTC teams. Um, so some of them, uh, some of the mid-sized schools are doing multiple FTC in lieu of FRC. Um, and so, yeah, so I'd say that's kind of where I think our numbers could be. I mean, honestly, 10 years from now, I mean, I don't know, we could have 400 FTC teams. Awesome. All right. So, um, with that, uh, I think this is one of our last questions. Chris, can you go to the next slide? I can. And okay. then we do it. And then, um, uh, oh, yep. uh, no problem. We, I got it, Chris. That's okay. And then we do have a couple of questions uh, from the chat that I can ask yep. you. So, um, so while Chris is putting those questions together so that we're able to um, kind of go through the additional questions that have come up. Um, I wanted to talk about our vir virtual community conference uh, that we are going to test drive. Um, and so, you know, when we looked at everything that was going on, we knew that we still wanted to make sure that we could bring our community together. And so in order to do that, um, we are looking at uh, if it's, you know, YouTube or Zoom or what our various options are for us to come together um, for, you know, the times we would normally have our events um, and essentially talk and, you know, facilitate roundtable discussions, share tips, uh, and go through a few presentations. And so we've put together this calendar um, starting tomorrow from 4 to 7 p.m. Um, and then next Thursday and Friday, and then essentially um, until April 3rd, which was the weekend of our state championship. However, with the news that school closings were going to be extended until May 1st, we may add additional dates depending on your interests. And so when we talk about the virtual community conference, Chris, if we can go to the next slide. Uh, we have three different types of sessions uh, that we would love your help creating these different opportunities and kind of coming together with ideas on what you would like to see discussed. And so uh, we have these three sessions are roundtables, which are basically open-ended discussions uh, where people are able to sh share challenges, identify solutions um, around various proposed topics. And so in the past, we've had a student roundtable, a mentor roundtable, um, you know, a uh, first like a girl and women are first in robotics roundtable, LGBTQ plus the first roundtables. Um, and so this idea essentially would be kind of a, you know, pose a question, have a facilitated discussion, but it's definitely very positively oriented. So um, there might be some discussion around challenges in order to give people an idea of what you're working through, but the real focus is on solutions. Then we have a fin talk. And so this is a highly engaging, you know, 30 minute, one speaker, one topic, you know, discussion. Um, this could be something uh, that you may normally see at a uh, forums event or, you know, any, any sort of those opportunities. Um, but this is essentially your chance to, you know, get in front of the community and talk about uh, something that truly engages you. And it doesn't have to be all first related. I mean, uh, in the past, we've had speakers like Danny um, who have sat there and talked about space um, at the, you know, first forums and he just kind of went on and, and chatted with people and the kids seemed to really enjoy it. They were highly engaged. They're asking questions, um, but essentially doing this fin talk is an option as well. And then finally, we have the third kind of structured piece, which is quick tips from teams. Um, so that's more focused on, you know, share a unique aspect of your team. We kind of expect the presentation portion to be closer to, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, and then majority of the time is spent kind of talking and asking questions and going from there. And because this is a virtual community conference and this is brand new, 
uh, we may adjust and change as we need to. So uh, one of the inspirational quotes that we had submitted to us was um, essentially uh, those who are the, uh, blessed are the flexible because they won't be bent out of shape. And I really liked that quote uh, because we need to be really flexible uh, in order to adjust to all these different changes. So Chris, if you go to the next slide. Uh, we do have a poll that we'd like to do um, to kind of identify with these various ideas and the descriptions that I've currently provided. Uh, which virtual content would you be most interested in? And then also, would you be interested in providing content? Yes or no. Uh, and I have this lovely Sign Up Genius link on the bottom there that says, you know, signupgenius.com slash go slash fin live. Um, and at this point, you should see a poll on your screen. And so if you could please let us know uh, which content you'd be interested in, that would be fantastic. And if it's all of them, you can select multiple. Um, and then if you're interested in helping, it's just yes or no. And so we will gather that data and go from there. Okay. So Chris, uh, We had a couple of questions that came in via the chat. So Mary, um, did you want to answer some of the questions that came about from the RFP question? Yes, so um, we have two questions that are um, related to the RFP process. Um, one was, will you be taking bids for the 2021 season in May like normal? Um, the answer is yes, <laughs> as of now. But I think really the question that I should have said first is, for those who may not know, can you explain what RFP means and what the process might look like for our teams and events? And I really thank you for that question. Um, so an RFP is a request for proposals. Um, if you've ever um, bidded on a contract within, if, if you work for a company um, and you've bid on a contract with the state or with another company to do any work, it's a similar process. Um, essentially, and so when we put out a, in our RRFP or request for proposals, we're essentially asking for proposals or bids from teams to host a, an event or a comp or the, um, the competitions, um, or a di the district competitions rather. Um, and so, um, what that looks like is we have a, an initial interest form that you fill out. It's a Google form. It's very short. Um, just stating that you're interested and potentially submitting a bid. Um, and then um, we follow that up with um, an actual um, application that you complete. Um, there's a couple layers to that. Um, one of the layers is if it's a good fit, um, you know, having our competition committee, which is Liz Smith, come out, um, and, and, come out and actually take a tour of the venue. Um, it, it's pretty detailed and we, um, the application will be posted on our website in April, like Renee said. Um, and so if that's something you're interested in, we'd be happy to take further questions once you take a look at that application. Um, in general, if you think you have a venue, if you have a large gym, two large gyms, um, an area for pit space and for the actual competition itself, um, those are the things that generally we look for. When I was uh, coaching 1018 at Pike High School, I thought that would be an ideal location um, because we had two gyms right next to each other, for example. Um, we had a hard time getting um, all the ducks in a row, though, with dates. And so that can sometimes be the key factor um, when you're submitting a bid. Um, so make sure your administration is on board um, before submitting anything. That is absolutely key um, because we, as an organization, need to make sure that that's okay before we move forward. Um, and um, I think the next question is for you, Renee. Yep. Um, so one of the, well, so first one of the questions was, um, how do I sign up to help facilitate a roundtable discussion? And so I think we answered that by mentioning, um, the link below. So signupgenius.com slash go slash fin live. Uh, there are different slots that you can sign up. And if for some reason we run out of room, you are welcome to email 
um, info at indianafirst.org and we will note that and then uh, essentially we will have identified that we have more content than slots and we will hopefully uh, add additional ones. So everything's kind of explained on that page, how those different pieces will work. Um, if it isn't, then you can email us and we'll go from there. But um, one of the other questions that came up was, um, will my team essentially get a refund? And so uh, what we know is that First Headquarters is evaluating this really complicated situation. And so they're going to be providing that information to all of us as soon as it come, becomes available. And I'm kind of expecting that to take a little bit of time, uh, but I know that lots of people are asking about it and lots of people want answers. Um, so from what we have been told, First Headquarters will communicate directly with all of our, the teams about you know, what that looks like and what the, that might mean. Um, so in terms of uh, refunds or questions about um, you know, registration, you know, that's where, that's, um, we as an entity are just one voice. And so you are always welcome to submit questions um, regarding uh, any of the updates that First Headquarters puts out to not only us, but also to FRC teams at firstinspires.org. And then one of the other questions that we got was, um, if they choose not to continue Dean's List this year, how will you handle the student board? Um, so, well, I am not, I would advocate to first headquarters for them to uh, come up with a better answer than that. Um, and if that didn't work out, uh, you know, we do have two students that have been identified. We have three FTC students that have been identified. That gives us five very talented students um, to act on our student board. Um, and so, you know, that might be one of the options available to us. But I yeah. might, yep. I want to maybe take a second to explain our board structure. Sure. Um, I think that that would be valuable um, for all of our mentors and volunteers. And so the Indiana First Board of Directors um, is comprised of an executive board um, and then um, our committees um, that do all of the primary functions of Indiana First or First Indiana Robotics. Um, and we are an affiliate partner with First Headquarters. And so we are really kind of that um, middle link in the chain between First Headquarters and then your team. Um, and so we put on the, most notably, put on the competitions um, that students experience, um, but do all of the other really programming in the state related to, to, um, to First um, at this time, um, with the exception of FLL. Um, and um, the student board of directors is part of the board of directors as a non-voting role. And so we really have, um, we are a separate nonprofit in all of this um, explanation, I guess. Um, and so we really do have the authority to, to put students on our board um, without going through headquarters. Um, and so I would say that the board would probably review that process and we'd be thrilled to, to at least recognize students in some sort of way. Um, the student board ha usually does really neat projects, um, even um, as a part of their term. Um, and they're really the voice for students throughout the FRC community, um, which is an important piece of, um, of what we do. Um, and so that's a little bit about the, the board. Um, I hope that's a helpful piece of, of what we're doing today. Excellent. One of the other questions that came in um, was, what is the idea behind this uh, Fin Live or the virtual community conference that we're working on? And so the idea is that it's for mentors and students. Um, and we would be able to um, essentially provide content that could be PowerPoint slides where you could share your screen um, if you had a, a you know, video option, you could potentially show people um, how to uh, CAD something, 3D print something, assemble, you know, different aspects of a motor, you know, lots of different options. Um, you know, the technology that we have access to nowadays is really impressive. Uh, this is actually like a 3D scanned print of my hand um, because I'm really frustrated at the size of uh, drill handles. So this is also a drill handle that I, you know, took apart from a you know, drill that I won't mention. Um, 
but you can do amazing things. And so being able to teach our students and show our students that you can go from a drawing that your kid has to, uh, you know, catting it out and, you know, into this diff into the computer and then being able to 3D print it. I mean, that is just uh, very inspiring and totally awesome. Um, and shout out to uh, Andy from Super Duper for doing that and posting the photos on Facebook. That was totally cool. Um, so yeah, so then uh, one of the other questions that we had as well um, was around grants. So like nationally oriented grants. So it could be um, Monsanto um, grants that headquarters manages like, you know, Delphi or Aptiv, et cetera. And so first headquarters, they are looking at all of that information. Um, and I, my understanding is that their development department uh, will essentially be kind of managing and working on those different pieces. Um, I have not heard from any of our contacts that they are upset um, with the fact that a epidemic or pandemic or whatever, you know, all of this crazy stuff happened. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's definitely out of our control. So I am not aware of anyone who is currently upset. Um, we do have expectations um, from, you know, engagements with our, our partners and our, you know, the organizations that we've worked with that we want to make sure we can execute on. Um, but beyond those expectations, people are very supportive. So that's what I've currently seen. So Chris, if you want to go to the next slide, uh, I wanted to make sure to highlight that you can follow us on social media. We still have a couple questions to go through, um, but these, this is where you can get all of the updates and information um, about what our plans are and how you can find the virtual community conference. Um, we'll be sharing those links um, you know, tomorrow at about noon for our four to seven uh, conference and connection and hopefully we'll have some sort of content at that point in time otherwise you know Chris uh, Lori Madison and I will be ad-libbing it so that'll be super exciting um, Mary did you have any other questions that came through that you could answer um, or or ones that you wanted to pr prioritize me answering yes yeah, so um, I see a question about um, if could first in Indiana pick their own Dean's List students, even if National First doesn't pick, um, or if First Headquarters doesn't pick um, Dean's List students. Um, so that's kind of a tricky question um, because that would essentially mean that we are um, giving out awards um, without. Um, headquarters authorization? So the answer would be no. Um, we could put them on our student board and um, recognize them in that way. I think that would be the best way to move forward. That would, uh, that would of course, be a, a, a board discussion and something that wouldn't just be my choice. Um, that'd be something that we'd want to spend some time discussing. Um, but that would be probably, with the guidance that we've received so far, um, we can't give out any awards without, without having events. Um, sure. So one of the other questions that came in was a question about would there be any longer form seminars um, that teach skills like graphic design or CAD or programming like in a series. Um, and I'm just letting you know, you know, there are, you know, five standard days in a week, working days, seven days, okay, there are seven days in a week. Five of those are typically, you know, working days. And so um, we only have the conferences scheduled on Thursday and Friday. And so if you would like to uh, do some sort of longer form weekly uh, webinar on say like Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday that you'd like to coordinate with us, I would be happy to talk to you about it, um, especially if there is student and mentor interest. So um, whoever asked about longer form seminars that teach those skills, if you know someone who can offer that up, send us an email at info at indianafirst.org and we'll go from there. Yeah, one of the, you know, one of the things that I've noticed is that students are really, parents especially, are really struggling to find things for their students to do at home. Um, and, um, and so I think one of the reasons that we came up with the virtual conference um, was to provide, to fill in that gap. 
um, for, for students and for teams um, and to really build a virtual community um, not just to give them something to do, because um, our students are great at coming up with innovative ideas all on their own. Um, but um, I think that these, if anyone's interested in, in developing content or providing those opportunities, I think that this is an ideal time since we're all stuck indoors anyway. <laughs> Unless you go running every day. Step alone, not indoors. Well, let's do. Um, Okay, so Chris, are there any other questions that have come through? I guess that was a little bit shorter than I was anticipating. Oh, interested in streaming any of the planned content publicly. Um, we are currently in discussions with our brilliant PR and marketing committee contacts to tell us where what the best streaming platform is. Um, so we were originally going to use Zoom um, and have it be an opportunity where we can uh, section people out. Because like, for instance, we can do mini breakout rooms in Zoom, um, which is something that we thought could become in handy. Um, but other people uh, were saying that there might be better platforms for us to utilize. And I was like, mm, I don't know technology very well um other than like i definitely got this whole system set up so if you guys have options i will learn how to use it and we will accommodate and go from there so we are tbd on those pieces we have gotten a few other questions uh, uh just kind of around that and some comments renee that i'm i'm sharing with you about some different options and then also one question was if a team is interested in doing multiple things uh should they still use the sign up link? Yes, um, because it, it will help me know what time, what person is available and what different opportunities you'd like to do. And again, if we run out of space on the sign up form, that will tell us that we can expand the conference and we, you can email us um, if you're not able to sign up for some reason. Um, in terms of getting streams up on the Blue Alliance, I think that that would be really cool. Um, and so maybe not roundtable discussions because those are typically, you know, we want to make sure we're protecting the privacy of our, um, you know, students, which is one of our top priorities. But we also uh, know that in terms of the, you know, team tip presentations and the, um, uh, those, you know, essentially the fin talk presentations that are one speaker, one topic, um, highly dynamic those could be great things to stream on on the blue alliance as well along with some of our you know kind of closing pieces related to careers and things like that that we're looking at um so yes so whoever is has asked the question about the blue alliance you should e definitely email us awesome cool beans thanks jordan that sounds great i look forward to your email Okay. Well, I mean. Uh, we did get a couple questions asking, are we gonna email or post the sign up link somewhere? Um, we, yeah, the sign up link for the um, sign up genius, Renee, we can make available on our social media and also on our website. Um, Yes, we can. I think the reason uh, that we didn't do that right away was because we wanted to announce it here instead of confusing everybody. Um, and so now we will share it on social media to confuse everybody and it will be excellent. At least we're realistic. All right, Chris, if you can go to the next slide. Okay. Oh yes, it just gave us a brilliant background for us to continue to answer questions through. You are also welcome to provide not only questions, but comments. Um, and the comments could include things like, we really support you because man, last week sounded like it was really hard or have some virtual dark chocolate because 
this is not easy, that's okay too. Or your eyeshadow's on point, always true. Or there's a plowy in the back of your screen, because there is. This was the plowy that was at my wedding, dozer, sorry. And a porg, because my dad's awesome. And I get weird birthday gifts. Chris, do you think I've stalled long enough to get the rest of the questions in? Okay. <laughs> Where is my amazing Yoda bow? Um, well, currently I have my uh, riveter headband in, and so my Yoda bow is not currently uh, in reaching distance. I do have this wonderful, I feel kind of bad because we got this wonderful gift for our volunteers from the University of Indianapolis. It's a phone stand. And so we were, you know, going to give this to all of our volunteers. But I mean, you know, we still have tons of them. And so hopefully uh, we'll be able to get that to everybody. Um, and uh, as Chris continues to pull pictures, you know, one of the fun things I have is I have lots of thank you notes here, like about four to five uh, hundred, you know, packaged things. I don't know. And so I will be writing lots of thank you notes um, to all of our volunteers as part of this super fun process. Um, so, yeah. I also, if anyone knows anybody who works in um, essentially, like, who is a chemist and could explain to me how, why, uh, when you do your eyeshadow makeup, uh, why your um, setting uh, cream stuff that you use to, like, set your eyeshadow, why, how that works and how it binds everything together to get, like, a rich and deeper color would be great because I'd like to do a presentation on our students, not only on how to make, like, team appropriate branded eyeshadow, but also on the chemical components behind it because you should, you know, embrace steam and have the artistic along with the scientific sides of the program. So if anyone knows any chemists, that would be great. I would love to chat with them. And there's a cat. That's Simba. He's hanging out over there. Uh, Danny, stop chatting Chris questions. And I see you're playing chess. That's a bad move. Anyway. Um, uh, we just, the other thing, uh, Renee, is that um, we've got um, just a lot of really nice uh, support messages, uh, knowing that the, the last week was probably hard on us and appreciating people taking a, um, you know, working hard to make sure everybody's safe. Um, uh, we did have one that Team 3176 has launched a virtual meeting schedule using Discord, um, and they'd be willing to share their experience. I know uh, I have heard from a, a few other teams that are doing things within their own internal communication tools. Uh, that might also be something fun for us to share. So uh, if, if you are listening, if, you're if your team is doing something internally, like something within Slack or Discord that, um, that you're doing to kind of keep your kids, uh, your students and mentors kind of team bonding, if you want to share those with us, that'd be fun because then we could share that out to the larger community. Uh, we may even have teams out there thinking, wait, um, I, teams are using Slack and Discord and, and we do have quite a few teams doing it. And uh, if 1741 is doing a weekly contest, they just said uh, they'd be willing to share out with people. So um, just kind of keeping the kids thinking and having fun. Yeah, I love that. Um, I'm sure we could also potentially, I don't know, help open up homework hours, right? I mean, these students have to go through um, virtual online e-learning opportunities. And as someone who has taken both uh, in-person classes and online um, digital college classes, um, that transition can be tough. Uh, and so, you know, if there is interest in you know, teams putting together, you know, certain times where we get together on Zoom um, with a few, you know, adults and kind of open it up to, you know, students who might need some homework help. We could certainly do that as well. Um, it's something that I particularly enjoy doing. 
and um, it could help our students from that mentoring perspective as well. Yeah, and uh, we had a question from uh, Madison uh, Henderson oh, yeah. uh, asking if um, if there's going to be any social media campaigns or uh, things that teams should be on the lookout for. Well, and I think, uh, you know, we, we got this question, but I think the answer is that, yes, we want to create a thin website page with all of the resources the teams are sharing. And so, Brad, I see you are on the call, and I'm going to hand that off to you and Madison. So uh, just do you think by tomorrow we'll have that, or do you think by Monday? I mean, <laughs> how fancy do you want it to be? I could have you a page up in five minutes. It doesn't need to be fancy for now. Um, if we wanted to throw something together and then make it yeah, fancier sure. by Monday, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so look on our, somewhere on our website. We'll, po we'll post it on the um, COVID-19 update. How about that, Brad? Sure. Okay, so that sounds good. And so then you can route yourselves through that process and we'll make sure to share it on social media tomorrow morning as well. Uh -huh. Renee, we did we did get asked who who should they send any of those resources to. If we if if people send to info at indianafirst.org, um, and then that gets uh, picked up by Madison or myself or whatever, and then we can just filter those off to the right people to get um, uh, to get those on the website. So info at indianafirst.org would be the best uh, best approach for that. Yep, and then if you, um, so if you discover, if we discover that uh, all of these slots have been filled, um, we will be, you'll send an email to info at uh, indianafirst.org, but then, um, you know, Lori, our first senior mentor for Southern Central Indiana, will be kind of managing, putting together a, a future uh, additional conference schedule um, and so we'll be continually updating that as well so we will you know point you to where all of those resources will be um, but on the top of our website if you go to first Indiana robotics um, you can see a banner that just has updates related to COVID-19 um, and so that's where we've been posting all of our messages that we've been sending to teams um, and so one of the other questions that we got is, uh, do most teams have access to their robots or are the robots quarantined? Um, th there is, because we are in suspension, uh, there is nothing that says what, where the robots should or should not be. However, because schools are closed until May 1st and we are supposed to be social distancing, um, you need, I would highly recommend following the CDC and our local rules regarding uh, social interactions, which to me would mean that you are probably not working on your robot. So, Mary, would you agree with that? Yeah, so, um, I mean, ultimately it comes down to the school, the, your, your local school. <laughs> In most cases, if you're a school-based team, um, would have authority over when and how you meet. Um, and so um, if the school's closed, then you are ultimately closed as well. Um, and so um, I would reach out to your administrators for guidance on, um, on how you meet or when. Um, and, and if you need any clarification, we'd be happy to help with that. But they're your first line of contacts. Um, and so, yeah, I would agree with Renee. Um, we're trying to adhere to any guidelines given to us um, so that we can get through this as quickly as possible um, so that we don't have to drag this out into all the way through the summer. Um, if we keep it to a small amount of, you know, 10 or less, we're hoping that we can get through this quickly. Um, that's what all the data is showing us right now. And as people uh, who, uh, who love science, um, I think that we can respect those boundaries. All right, so one of the other questions that came through is, um, could we have a space to compile, like what would you want to learn? Or uh, are there any mentors you want to specifically hear from? And so the answer is yes, it, I, I have a survey. It is a long survey. Uh, it says it's a long survey at the very beginning for the students, um, but I figure what else are they doing? Um, so. 
uh, we will share that uh, and we'll have those questions and I'll try to do some formatting to make it a little bit easier for people to answer the real questions and then answer my questions like what problems do you want to solve in the world or what brings you joy or what makes you angry because those are the really cool questions that I would prefer to you know chat with people about but and then create like topics around like what is the binding agent that you use in eyeshadow primer because that's a question I have Hey, I mean, people are laughing, but this is this. These are serious questions. Like, if you don't want melty eyeshadow, it's a thing. Anyway, um, so then, do do do. There was a comment about uh, we'd love to see what other teams are doing through this time and having a space to share what's working in a virtual space um, would be helpful. And so maybe Madison, our America Vista, could work with our student board of directors to create a social media campaign focused around um, how we are virtually building community and how your teams are meeting and what are some tips and tricks. So I think look to Madison, our blog and our social media for those different pieces. Okay, so we have three more minutes. We can wrap up the call at seven to get everyone back to the really important things you're up to. Um, so if there are any more questions, you have maybe two more minutes to get them in and then we'll, we'll wrap things up, I think. Uh, Renee, just to make a plug for the um, e-newsletter, I know we have a lot of mentors on. Um, if you are if you're a first um, or second, like the leader alternate mentor, um, you're on our list that we send specific pieces of, of messaging out to. We do have a couple of other um, newsletter or emails that go out. We have the um, in First Indiana e-newsletter uh, that goes out to about um, 900 or so people. I put a link um, to, uh, a web form on our website to subscribe to that. There's also the team update email that goes out to roughly 500 and uh, about 540 people. Lots of mentors, some team leads. There's there's nothing ever in it that you know students or mentor you know that people can't see or anything. Um, during season that goes out. I'd like to say weekly, um, but uh, I put a lot of information in there about scholarship opportunities and grant opportunities, lots of different things. So. I'd say if you're also interested in um, in that, uh, you can email me, C. Osborne, and that's O-S-B-O-R-N-E, C. Osborne at indianafirst.org. Let me know you'd like to be on the team update email. Otherwise, check the email you got this evening, and there's a link that you can receive our e-newsletter. Um, and I guess just one other plug would be, if you are a mentor, um, and actually, you don't even have to be a mentor. You could be a, a volunteer. On the First Inspires website, if you go to the First Robotics Competition page, there is a place for you to subscribe to the blog there. Uh, so you could subscribe to Frank Merrick's blog and get those updates, and those are also very handy. That's all I've got to say. Perfect. All right, Chris, that was the time frame in terms of any final questions. Did any last question come in that we need to answer before we sign off? Um, no, we've got um, just a few people who um, have just made some comments, I think, about wanting to, um, oh, yeah, sorry. The Student Board of Directors is going to be putting together some social media challenges for yep. the students. Um, those will be going out on multiple platforms, most likely most likely all of them except Facebook since most of our students aren't on there. Uh, but, um, uh, but we will be putting, uh, the, working with our student board, they're gonna come up with some fun things that their peers would enjoy instead of us coming up with things that we know that their peers probably wouldn't enjoy. So, um, <laughs> so uh, yep, and then, um, uh, yeah, so I think that's it. Just some other nice comments. Brad Thompson did put a link uh, for the team uh, resources, uh, uh, remote team resources page. Uh, really? And that exists already. 
I don't know why I'm surprised. I shouldn't be. Yeah. Thank and you. I'm guessing uh, Brad can nod or shake his head. I'm guessing now that's also a menu link, like on the drop down and th the thumbs up there. So oh, yeah, yeah, go off of our homepage. We go to team resources. It'll be a remote team resources. And we'll start getting uh, we'll start getting stuff onto that page as, as we get it from people and uh, and go from there and and just know that um, I from my standpoint as program director um, I, I've been really impressed by our our board of directors and by by headquarters um, this has been a really I don't it's been very challenging for everyone I know uh, I I have a high school senior here at home who uh, is dealing with, you know, her school year was supposed to end in the last week of May and it's looking like it might have ended on her. So uh, we know it's a really rough time. Uh, there's no, and, and there's probably no good answers or nothing that any of us can say that to uh, make things better for everybody, uh, but know that um, sitting where I was sitting, listening to our board and talking to our staff, uh, lots of broken hearts on our end too. Yep. All right. So, uh, thank you to everybody, um, who came together and for all the support that you've provided. Um, you know, it's our future built better together. That's what our motto is. Uh, we are going to get through this together, uh, as the community, as we always have. And so, uh, thank you for looking out for each other. Thank you for sharing your resources. Uh, we really appreciate all of the resounding support we've received. Um, I look forward to sharing uh, some of the other fun uh, fin, shark fin things we've received. Um, my dad sent me a shark fin headband that lights up. And so as soon as we get back to events, I'm really looking forward to being able to, you know, wear that. Because at first I just opened it up and it was the shark fin and I was like, this is terrible. And then there was a button and I pressed the button and it started lighting up. And I was like, my dad knows me too well. Like this is perfectly branded. So, all right. Thanks everybody. We really appreciate your time. Uh, Chris, I think we're going to sign off at this point. Uh, if there are any other questions, you can know where to find us, uh, you know, send them over to info at indianafirst.org. Perfect. And we'll review the chat. There were some other things that came through, but we'll review all those and get back to individuals and or post, uh, answers to the really good questions on our website through our FAQ. So. All right, thank you. Thanks. Thanks.